Hello and welcome to gorgeous North Wales once again. Just stunning. Now in this week's video, I wanna give you four really simple tips to help you improve your landscape photography in a mountainous landscape, a mountainous setting, exactly like what we have behind us. So let's go, come with me. So welcome back to beautiful Wales. Absolutely stunning, this place. It just never lets me down. Um, we're in the Berwyn range this week, the Berwins, which is the northeast, northeast area of Wales, a little bit close to the English border. Um, if we were down on the ground and we could drive about 40 minutes that way behind you guys, we'd eventually get to Snowdonia National Park, um, which is obviously a lot more famous. I did a video there last month. If anyone would like to watch that, stick it up in the corner if you haven't seen it. Great adventure. But yeah, it's just a little bit busier over there. It's a lot more popular and rightly so, it's stunning. However, if you enjoy a little bit of solitude in the mountains, this seems like a really good place to come. I haven't seen anyone else on this hike and obviously we're still getting stunning views like this. So first impressions, incredible place. Um, now to get to the, the point of this week's video, um, I find shooting in mountainous terrain just like this quite challenging, even now after like three or four years of um, practicing landscape photography. Um, it all started for me really like becoming serious when I was in New Zealand on the South Island. So obviously a lot of mountainous terrain. So that's where I learned a lot about landscape photography and overcome many hurdles and stuff like that. Um, so I really hope you get some of it from the tips that I'm going to share with you in this video. Um, weather wise today, this evening, looking all right. You can see the clouds behind me. There's a little bit of mood, bit of drama going on. Could be a lot worse up there. Behind you guys, it's opened up a little bit more, um, which is good because that's in a westerly direction. If we do get a sunset, that's where it's going to be. So I'd rather it be over there than over there, if that makes any sense. Plan is, um, have a little explore up on this peak for a little bit, and then we're going to go down to this lake here. It's called Kling Klungkors. And we're going to go to the opposite side, shoot in this direction. Um, hopefully it all works out with the sunset facing this way, but you know, we'll see. We'll see, that's never guaranteed. Um, but yeah, hope you're gonna enjoy the tips that I'm gonna share with you guys this week and looking forward to exploring a new area. So come with me. So as I perch here on this precarious looking cliff edge, I'm gonna take my first image. And I'm actually gonna give you guys my first two tips here um, of how to improve your landscape photography in mountainous terrain like what we have here. Now the first tip is to not always shoot wide. Don't always shoot wide. It doesn't always make for a good photograph. Um, now I've got my wide angle lens set up here and you'll be wondering why, but I'm gonna talk you through that later. This is something that I always do. Um, but yeah, I found it quite a lot early on that I was getting to these beautiful mountain peaks and gorgeous views, exactly like what we have here. Um, and then I'd take a photograph with, with my wide angle lens and it'd look all right on the back of my camera. And then I'd get home and I'd just be so underwhelmed by it. Um, and what it is, is it's, it's never gonna match the emotions that you felt when you were stood up on a mountain top. It's just a snapshot basically. And if you look at this composition that I've got set up here, the obvious subject is the lake, and I've even got a little bit of this sort of um, grassy area here in the foreground, just to add a little bit of um, interest to the image. But 
yes, all right, you've got the lake, which is a nice subject. Uh, you've got a half decent looking sky. And in, you've got this pretty nice ridge here on the right hand side as well, which is adding a little bit to the photograph. But I think this is a really good example because if you look at everything there to the left hand side of the lake, it's not nice in my opinion. Obviously this is all subjective, but I don't think it's nice. I don't think it adds anything to my photograph. Um, so I just don't see the need to shoot wide. But what, uh, why I've got my wide angle lens on, this is something that I always do, a little bit of advice. Um, this is something that I've taught myself and it works really well. It's to come to a mountaintop like this and get your wide shot. Just get it in the bag, get it on your memory card, go home, be proud of it. You know, I'm not saying never shoot wide. And almost, you know, just get it out of your system. And then once you've got that, this photograph then, then you can start worrying about other things, which will bring me on to point number two. So we'll get, that, uh, we'll get that one in the bag. I'll show you that photograph now, and then we'll get straight onto tip number two. On to tip number two, and this is all about being original. I think this is um, something that is very difficult to achieve, but it really helps you um develop your style i think as a landscape photographer so you know we've got that wide shot now that anybody that came up here they probably would have got um here is a photograph that i took uh, when i was in hell Velin, and this is a really good example of it on that one given day probably 100 people went up and took exactly the same photograph you know even probably over 70 percent of them probably more than that would have been with a mobile phone but it doesn't matter it's the same composition so you know in my opinion there's nothing unique about that there's no um, creativity and I think that's what it's all about being a landscape photographer is trying to be unique and this is you know where you can start being creative now and start thinking outside the box and that sort of thing and this is where it's fun this is where it gets fun um, not feeling very fun at the minute the weather's took a little bit of a change and we're getting loads of low cloud we're definitely not getting a sunset um, so yeah I don't really know how it's going to go but yeah this is my hopefully decent example now of trying to be original um, so I'm set up here now and I'm zooming in on this peak here um, I've got my 55 to 200 lens on and I'm shooting at about 180 mil so obviously I'm really zoomed in right at the top of the peak because we're getting some clouds that are coming from this direction hitting the peak and then sort of spraying across it to the left if that makes any sense um, and it just looks really really dramatic up there and gorgeous and this is something that I've just looked at with my eye as a, as a landscape photographer and you know figured maybe it'll make for a nice image maybe not who knows um but yeah I, I think it's it's really really important to try and stay um original as a landscape photographer you know don't just google a location or look on instagram and see other people's photographs and then just go and take the same thing i mean there's nothing wrong with doing that i'm not saying it's like copyright or anything but i Personally, I just think it's quite boring and like not very rewarding for yourself as a landscape photographer. This is what it's all about. That is not what it's all about. We're going to be shrouded by cloud any minute, but um, fortunately, I've already got the image. Um, so I'll show you that one now, and I'm definitely going to start heading down. All right, at this stage, I don't know how that image came out, but I am getting the hell out of here. The weather, as it often does in the mountains or any of this uh, sort of terrain, has just changed so quickly, honestly. It was like five minutes and I could see all the low hanging clouds coming in. Um, it's mental, so it's starting to rain a little bit. I'm really <laughs> unprepared if it does rain, to be completely honest, it was not forecast. Uh, it was one of those evenings where the weather could have gone either way and unfortunately, as it often does, it's gone the wrong way. So I'm going to start heading down and um, just try and get out of this horrible weather for now. And then we'll, we'll soon be on to tip number three. So I'll speak to you soon. down uh, from that ball of cloud or mist up there that was uh that was interesting that was a good crack jesus anyway uh found a good little spot here um it's fairly dark now but um the conditions are actually really really cool 
um, for me to give you a good example of tip number three, which is all about something that I talk about a lot. So I'm gonna get myself set up here now, and then we'll get into it. <laughs> And there we go, we're set up. It's pretty dark now, by the way. Obviously, the camera's ISO is just pretty high, so you can't really see it through the through the computer screen, but it's quite dark, trust me. Anyway, um, tip number three is scale. And like I said, this is something that I talk about quite a lot in my videos. Um, something very frustrating about it as, as landscape photographers, it's something that I've mentioned in a previous video, but it's annoying. Like, you know, I'm studying now looking at this gorgeous, vast landscape big ridges, gorgeous, huge uh, lake down there. But, you know, I'll take a snapshot of it, take a photograph of it, even if I've constructed my composition pretty well and I'm happy with it, it it's very hard sometimes to show scale um, and sort of to evoke that in your in your image. So um, what I like to do, if anyone watches me regularly, you know exactly what's coming. <laughs> I like to put myself in my photographs. Um, for anyone that's new to my channel, this is, um, a lot of how my landscape photography started, you know, putting myself um, in front of the camera, putting a self timer on 10 seconds, whatever, jumping in front of the camera and using myself as foreground interest. Uh, back then I didn't have a clue about scale or anything like that. I just simply liked the way it looked and it's something that's continued like three or four years later into my photography now and I still love doing it. Uh, but yeah, now I realise that it's a really good way of showing scale to the person that's looking at the image because you know everyone knows how tall how big a human is put that human in the in the foreground and it gives you a really good example of um, the size of the human versus the landscape um, so to speak so it's exactly what i'm going to do now i thought i'd mention my settings whoops i thought i'd mention my settings because they're a little bit different than usual um f 2.8 just to let as much light into that lens as possible because like i said we are pretty dark um, and I'm shooting at ISO 800. I'm shooting at ISO 800 because I want a faster shutter speed because I'm going to be in the image and as much as I might, I might think I'm stood still, I'll be moving ever so slightly. So I want my, myself um, as a subject to be as sharp as possible. Um, and even that is only giving me one one six of a second. So it's still a fairly long shutter speed. I prefer it to be faster, um, but I don't really want to go above ISO 800. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll take a couple of shots and we'll see how it turns out. And uh, like I said, I've got my 10 second timer on and literally hit the shutter and just leg it in front of the camera. And to be honest, you know, have a little pose like that. Make sure you don't fall off the side of the cliff. We've heard the shutter. Um, and obviously you can do it as many times as, as you want. There's no limit. So I can come back now, take a little look at the image. I look like an idiot, terrible. I think that might have been the wind. Blame the wind. So yeah, you can just come back and just try again. Just, you know, look pensive, look out into the landscape. And it's such a good way of showing scale um, to the person that's looking at the image. So instead of you guys watching me back and forth to my camera, I'll show you that photograph now uh, and then we'll carry on getting away from the top of this mountain. Hope you like it. Whoa, so hope you like that one um, if you check out my Instagram I will um, I will um, there's, there's a lot of other good examples of them sort of images I don't think that one was particularly very good to be honest it is very dark might have been a little bit of motion blur but whatever um, I hope you got the point from the tip that's the main thing um, it's a really really good way of showing scale now tip number four is something that, that was my plan you know earlier I said uh, I wanted to get down to the clin down to the lake and get a beautiful sunset shot obviously that didn't happen um, but that was my plan for tip number four which is all about dynamic range um, now dynamic range is basically when you've got um, a lot of very very bright highlights and a lot of very very dark shadows in your image that is a high dynamic range which is uh, technically quite a challenging thing for a, a photographer to be able to overcome um, so I'm going to use a photograph as an example. Uh, there's a photograph here that I took a couple of weeks ago at Helvellyn. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake with this photograph, um, but I mean, it's good in a sense that I can show you now um, what my mistake was. Um, I did bracket on this photograph, 
Now, for anyone that doesn't know what bracketing is, um, as a little sort of brief definition, um, it's, say, for example, in this photograph, you know, you've got the sky, which is obviously very, very bright. I mean, the sun's there, you're shooting directly into the sun. And then the mountain is very, very dark um, because the sun is behind it and thus a big shadow is created. So, I mean, huge, huge contrast between the lights and the darks. Um, so bracketing is basically when you take two, three, or even more images, um, exactly the same composition, but you just change your exposure each time. So you take one photograph in this image again, for example, first photograph would be to expose for the sky. So I want the sky very, very dark. So I basically underexpose the whole image so that the exposure is correct just for the sky. And then it's pretty much the exact opposite for the mountain in this case. Um, so pretty dark shadows. And obviously what you're trying to do is bring them shadows up. So you're basically overexposing the whole image. So obviously the sky will just be a big white canvas, um, but then the exposure will be correct for the mountain. And then you blend the images together, however many there are in Photoshop, I do personally. Uh, but then you get eventually a perfectly um, balanced image expo exposure wise. Um, but you can see in this image in the foreground, I didn't, um think about the reflection from the sun so i actually overexposed in the foreground um the big streak of light you can see there that's going over the lake that was overexposed because i didn't think about it so i didn't do my bracketing correctly if that makes any sense um but yeah i think um if you can learn how to bracket um it's you know it, it can be really challenging your dynamic range in the mountains it is anywhere anyway but because you've got the huge peaks and if the sun's behind them like in this case it you know it can create some really really strong contrast between the bright uh, between the highlights and the shadows like i keep saying so yeah if you can learn how to bracket or get yourself some nd uh, graduated filters they can do the job as well out on the field uh, i want to get a set myself but yeah uh, learn more about correctly exposing your images basically it does sound very very simple but once you get out into the mountains especially as a beginner you will start to notice that the dynamic range is often increased um, and it's usually because you don't a lot of the time you don't get all that sunlight in your foreground and your midground and stuff like that as well. Um, so yeah, <sighs> cheers for watching. Um, apologies for the way it sort of went towards the end. I mean, you can't control the weather. I mean, it's a, probably a good example that you've seen that if you're a beginner, it doesn't always go to plan. More often than not, to be honest. Um, but I need to get the hell off this mountain. This is another sacrifice you make as landscape photographers on a mountain. Uh, all for the sunset it didn't even happen anyway i'm babbling hope you got something from this week's video i really do <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for watching subscribe if you're new and i'll see you next week on the next adventure out i'm trying to do the hand thing that i do in every video there but obviously i can't reach the camera anyway see you next week